reading from the 15th chapter of Mark. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law, and the entire Sanhedrin reached a decision. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of. But Jesus made no reply, and Pilate was amazed. Now, it was a custom at this feast to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man named Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate, knowing it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews? Pilate asked them. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Wanting to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. They killed him. It was supposed to be me, not him. You know, I was the one that uh, they had sentenced to death, but he died in my place. He took my place on, on the cross. I didn't ask him to do it. No, I don't ask anyone to do anything for me. You know, I'm Barabbas. I can take care of myself, and whatever happens, so be it. Why did he do it? Why did he let them kill him on, instead of me? You know, he could have probably gotten off with a, with a stern warning, maybe a few lashes. He could have gotten out of town when, when me and my men were causing a, a ruckus. But he died for me. Jesus, Jesus, why did you have to go and do that? Why didn't you just let me live out my, my own fate? Now I've got to deal with this every day that I live. I've got to deal with those things that he, that he said that were... So hard to understand. Well, I should have known it. You know, Simon, Simon was one of his followers, and, and it seemed that Jesus stopped Simon dead in his tracks. It was an issue that Simon did a 180-degree turn. You know, the way he used to think, the way he used to act, and then when he started following Jesus, all of that changed. I should have known. You know, Simon was, was one of ours. He was one of, one of my guys. You know, we were those that, well, Jesus referred to, to Simon as, as Simon Peter. Some referred to him as Simon the, the zealot. That, that's what we were, zealots. We were freedom fighters. We were zealous about making sure that um, our people were protected from the Romans. Oh, there had been years ago that we were under the slavery of, of Pharaoh in, in Egypt, and, and we, weren't, we didn't have the same type of slavery today, but we were in bondage nonetheless to the Romans. And we were going to see that uh, we got, got free of the Romans. It was something that, um, oh, we, we started out kind of quiet. We didn't want to draw much, uh, much attention to ourselves. But it was something that over time we were going to gain momentum. We were going to gain numbers. And, and we were going to cause a revolution and, and let the blood be, be shed in order to get rid of those Romans. We were doing it for righteous wrath. God was on our side. We were going to do God's bidding and, and we were going to, to carry out God's punishment on the Romans. Well, as we started out kind of, kind of quietly... We'd kind of start brush fires and, uh, and uh, we'd kind of nip at their flanks. You know, it was an issue that we would find someone who was a Roman sympathizer and, and we would assassinate them here or, or maybe we'd do a theft there or, or maybe we'd start some riots just to, to keep them a, a little bit off balance. Oh, I knew that our day was coming. We, we were going to, to be successful. Well, Simon would come to me. Simon would come to me and say, he would say, 
Barabbas, you need to, to come and listen to this Jesus and, and what he, he has to say. And I'd say, no, Barab- or, no Simon, I don't need to, to go hear what uh, Jesus has to, to say because that's what we sent you for. You were to go and to find out what he had to say, where it is that they were going to be and, and who it is that they were going to go after and, and you were our informant. So I don't need to be there. But Simon would insist. He would say, Barabbas, there's something different about him. Others have claimed to be the Messiah, but, but I think he's the real deal. You know, he would, would talk about changing the world He said, you change the world one person at a time. You you change the world by love, no matter what. I listened to Simon's words and I'd say, that's preposterous. There is no way that you can, can, can change the world that way. You change the world by the sword. You change the world by, by force. And that's the way we're, we're going to do it. Well, you always, was an issue that uh, as I would, would talk with Simon, he would, would share these things with me, and it was baffling. It was, it was perplexing. You know, he would, would say that um, we're to, to love and we're to, to show compassion. Well, you know, Simon and I, we, we had our, our debates and it was obvious that we were going in, in different directions. And, and so, you know, as he tried to convince me to, to go see Jesus one more time, I said, Simon, I don't need to hear about turning the other cheek. He said, or I told him that you could only turn your cheek so many times on those Roman bullies, and, and before long you, you didn't have another body part to turn to them. Well... Simon and I decided that we would, would go our separate ways. He was going to, to follow this gentle Jesus. But I was going to, to continue on, on my course with, with the rebels. We were going to, to continue to, to fight and, and bring in our will by, by force. So Simon went on his way and, and I began leading a, a riot. I began leading a, a rebellion and they arrested me. They threw me in prison. Uh, they brought me to justice fairly quickly. The, the, as I stood before Pilate, they began a, explaining the, the charges and, and Pilate didn't take any time at all to, to decide he's guilty. You know, it, it was like he was kind of flipping a fly off the mantle. You know, it, it was an issue that... Uh, he seemed to have no emotion, and he said, he deserves to die. He deserves to be crucified. Let him be an example for the others that might want to try this in the future. Well, I was willing to die. I was willing to die for the cause. You know, kill or be killed. I had done both. And so I knew that I could become a martyr for the cause, and there would be someone else that, that would rise up and, and would would take our movement forward in seeking the, the freedom from, from the Romans. But you know, something else happens when you're condemned to die. You begin, begin looking at the world a little bit differently. You begin to hear things you've never heard before. You see things you've never seen before. You smell things you, you've never smelled before. It was... It was such a sobering experience for me. As night fell, I, I couldn't fall asleep. All I could think about it was what was going to happen at daybreak. The guards were going to come for me. They were going to place a cross beam on my, my shoulder and, and I was going to carry my own instrument of death to the killing fields where they would then take spikes and put through my wrists and then take the crossbeam and attach it to a pole. And then they would drop the pole in into the ground. And there would be excruciating pain and, and humiliation and a slow, agonizing death. Now you you may say, Well, why why did you think about that? Why did you focus on that? And well, the reason 
is that I had to prepare myself. You know, at least if I knew what was coming, there would, I could maybe face it with some sense of, of dignity. Well, there I was in, in the prison. The, the sun came up and, and no one came. It seemed that the hours went by so slowly, but they weren't coming for me. And, and then I heard, heard footsteps out, outside my, my jail cell, and I heard a key that went into my, the, the door, and, and as it opened up, there were two Roman soldiers. Two Roman soldiers. That wasn't enough to execute anyone. What were they going to do? You know, were they going to torture me? Were they going to humiliate me in some way? You know, the Roman soldiers were, were known for uh, taking particular, particularly condemned prisoners and, and making sport of them. See how much they could make them suffer, how, how much they could humiliate them. What were they going to do with me? And, and there were two of them, and the, and the tall one said, Get out of here, scum. Pilate said that, that you can be set free. Get out of here. I stood in shock. I, I stared in amazement. I, I couldn't say anything, but he answered the question that I wanted to ask, and he said, Pilate has chosen to set you free and crucify someone else in your place. He said the crowds have demanded that, that you be let go and someone else is going to be crucified in your, your place. And, and if I were you, Barabbas, the soldier said, I'd get out of town as quickly as possible. Because if you stick around Jerusalem too long, chances are your pardon's not going to last very long. Well, well, who, I, I was stammering and stuttering and said, who, who is it that um, is going to be crucified in my place? I said, oh, I don't know. It's some, some radical preacher up from the, from the area of Galilee. I, I think his name's Jesus. Coincidence? My name's Jesus, too. He was Jesus bar Joseph that, that meant Messiah, Son of God. My name was Jesus Barabbas, rebel. Barabbas meaning Son of the Father. Coincidence? Uh, you, you figure it out. Well, you know, I, I didn't ask him to, to do that. Why is it that he would die for me? You know, it, it was an issue that he talked about peace. He talked about love. He talked about going the second mile. And now he was going to be carrying my cross. The last mile that he would walk. Why? Why didn't he... Choose someone more deserving to die for. Why didn't he choose someone more worthy to die for than, than me? And yet, he loved me enough to die for me. Oh, you may think that life became easy once I was let out of jail. Life became easy once I was pardoned. No, not at all. Every day, Every day I, I have to live with the fact that someone died in my place. Every day, every breath I take, I have to remember what he did for me. I'm still trying to figure out all those, all those things that, that he said about loving one another. You know, about changing the world by changing people. And that you change people by loving them one by one no matter what. That's hard. You know, he talked about the fact that I'm supposed to love my neighbor but I'm also supposed to love my enemy. That person that seems to have it in for me, rather than, than try and do them in, 
I'm supposed to hope for the best? That was so contrary to everything I had ever believed, everything I had ever lived, everything that, that I ever, ever taught. But that was Jesus' message that he died for me. Now, I, I'm still trying to figure it out. I, I'm, I'm so confused by it all, and, and that's why, I, why I'm sharing it with you. Maybe, maybe you can help me figure it out. Jesus said, there is no greater love than the love of one who would lay their life down for another. I don't know. You figure it out. We're to change people. We're to change the world. And in order to change people, it's by loving them, no matter what. Jesus lived to love others. Consider for a moment. Who do you live to love? Do you live to love yourself? Or do you live to love others as Jesus did? Another way to consider the same question is by asking yourself, are you a, a good-intentioned Christian? Or are you an intentional Christian? It sounds like the same thing, but there's a drastic difference between the two. One stops in your mind, and one continues through with your actions. Think for a moment if Jesus was only good intention. He wouldn't have fed the 5,000. He would have only thought it a good idea. He wouldn't have preached transforming sermons. He would have only thought it was an important idea. He wouldn't have healed people. He wouldn't have rebuked the brokenness of the Pharisees. He wouldn't have died on a cross because there would have been no reason for him to die on a cross. If Jesus was merely good-intentioned, faith would be hollow and the Gospels would be meaningless. Now I ask you, if you are a good-intentioned Christian, if you think it's all sounding pretty good in your head, or are you an intentional Christian, are you somebody that wants to walk out of here today with a heart on fire for changing the world through changing others in the name of Jesus Christ? That's something for you to consider, and I pray that you do more than consider it.